My name is Andrew Hall. I'm the president and the co-founder of Arsenal Strength, and we're here going to talk about heavy metal today. I can't wait. So let's talk about this. Just me and you have a discussion. What makes a great breakdown? I think that part of it, in my opinion, is like we talked about before, it's definitely the theme of the song, like when it gets to that climactic, yeah. like emotional, I mean, obviously usually it's angry. And when they, yeah. drop, when they drop, you know, whatever they're trying to say, and then just cut loose. 100%. That just, it's, it's, al it's. <laughs> it's almost like uh, we, we were discussing before this was rolling, like, these I had to narrow down thirteen, which is which is much harder than anticipated. But it's they're all taken out of context of the song. They're like different snippets within a, within the song. So if like if you're list, I think they're even more impactful when they're taken in context when you're listening to the song and then that part comes because a lot of it has to do with time signatures just going you know going from from a, you know going from 170 200 BPM and then you're just dropping the time at half. It just makes it so much heavier. So a lot of times, it's really just a time change, or not even a tempo change, but just like going at halftime. Um, but they, uh, there, it's going to be fun to kind of go through these. All right, this is this first one. This is the Silent Planet Offworlder. Dude, that's that's heavy, that's heavy. That's an intro. Um, that was the f one of the first tracks, not uh, not the first. It was one of the first tracks on the new album I heard. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, "Ah, oh, man, um, there's nothing I don't like about that. It's just heavy, and just well done. The t the tones, everything is just insane. So that one's awesome. All right, the next one is. Uh, Thy art is murder, pu puppet master. And it keeps going with the solo. Um, that's crushing. The uh, it's so evil. I, f I feel honestly convicted listening to them. Um, their message is very dark. I don't love that, but CJ's vocals are. Scary, and that is just crushing. Yes, he sounded, yeah. I, when I was making the video last night, I was, you know, playing the background. Yeah, the this. Recording, and I was like, I'm... <laughs> yeah, like, open your Bible. Yeah. But yeah, right. um, <laughs> it's it's so sad because um, we, were, we were talking about this before, but, like, there's some bands that are just so evil or they're so, they're so lost. And, um, man, that, that, uh, the guy, obviously, that song is about, like, the church and false prophets and um, which there's a lot of problems with the church and false prophets, but it's like, man, it's like, it's not, don't be mad at Jesus. It's not Jesus, man. It's the, it's the yeah. church and religion and organized religion. Why is Chubby here staring at me? 
focusing. But um, either way, that's that is absolutely bone crushing. Okay, the next one was um, this one was tough because they've got a lot of just jammers, and I'm not a I'm not a big hardcore like a hardcore guy like I, I'm not don't love it, but this band just puts out just like they, some bands just like we just want to write mosh riffs with like a hardcore verse and then just back to mosh, yep. and this is Barrier Dead, dude. This is back maybe like. 2007 or 8 when this album came out but it's called Mirror Mirror and it's a good one an oldie but a goodie Okay, that one's that one has a very seven dust vibe. Yes, I can see you know. That. Yep. But it's just it's good. It's classic. That there's probably some other ones that are heavier. That's one that I just love how it builds up in the song. If you listen to the song, like that's the outro. Right. It's just it's really really good. So I I, I like that one. Um, let's see here. We had Vel of Maya, Phoenix. Again, this this band they are notorious for just shredding and putting out honestly breakdowns yes yeah that would be hard to pick my it's it's yeah. tough this one this is the one for some reason i think it's almost like two breakdowns in one it's got it, it comes it, you know breaks down and then it like it's like how does it get any heavier right. and then they're like then they i'll show you oh my view would you oh gotcha <laughs> I'm a big fan of that one. That's that's a tough one to they, beat, man. They are pretty freaking awesome. They are really good, man. They've gotten more melodic um, recently, like with vocally, which I'm cool with. But they still know how to like. They just know how to like. They have like the formula down for that, dude. It's so good. And then um, the next one's a, the, another one that it's impossible to pick one because yes, after the burial. So I picked an older one. They've got some newer ones. Um, if I remember correctly, gosh, this came out. This is a long. This one that I chose was like a, one of their maybe their second album really? uh, with think, their new vocalist that they re-recorded that rare form album. Oh right, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. And it was like it was remastered and maybe you know like the the sound was better on the. It's got like a green. It's a black and green cover. This this whole album is crushing, but this song is specifically there was something about this beat down that is just. It's nasty, but they have literally 475 breakdowns that, and I chose this one. Right. Um, so let's check this one. <laughs> then it goes again. It was sad, man. They had, if I remember correctly, this might have been like in 2010 or 11. They, their guitar player, I think he committed suicide, man. Yes, I, I remember. And that. that was, I used to like follow them and just kind of, this is like, I mean, social media was obviously around, but like, I just remember he seemed always so like goofy and fun. Right. And it was so sad to see him like take his life yes, in the past. That's, that's yeah, man, they they were him and uh, I think Trent's the guitar player. They are incredibly good. They, their whole band, the drummer's incredible. I mean, they're such a good band. So shout out to them. 
All right, the next one is a little special because these are, this is a band that, the band I used to play in, um, The Showdown, we toured with these guys and they were like four years old at the time, not literally, but they were, they were babies, man. Like they might've been like 19 or 20. And August Burns Red is, for a metalcore band that's been around that long, it's incredible yes. for one. But I think the thing that stands out the most about these guys is just what good human beings they are. Jake, Jake's the one I know the most. I have a relationship with Jake. I love that dude. Um, he is one of the best guys I know. He's one of those guys that when you're, uh, when you're around him, you, you, you genuinely want to be a better person. Right. Like he just, he brings that out, the best out in people. Right, yep. um, great person, Matt Griner is one of the best drummers that's around right now. He's so technical and so clean. They're just incredible live, highly recommend them. Again, they have 4 million breakdowns that are absolutely right, yeah, crushing. That's a, yeah, that's a hard, that's a hard it's one. It's a tough one. Too. This is one of the most popular ones, but I think this one was also lyrical. Like Jake's vocals are so heavy. Um, but this one is just special because I feel like they're all honest, like, like Little Brothers, if that makes sense. Right. So this is Composure by August Burns Red. Kill Bob. Dude, Jake's message, man, that's, I mean, it's, he just, Jake is just spreading hope, man. Right. Um, it's, love, again, love that dude, man, those guys. All right, next is, okay, so we, Showdown played uh, Furnace Fest in 22. Yep. Because, dude, this is a long time, like, I haven't played in the band since 2006, so it was a little rusty. Right, yeah. Trying to get back in there, but we had a, we had a blast playing. And this band actually played, and they were so heavy. Um, the Acacia Strain. So that was fun to watch. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, they either played this song first to open it, or it was the second track of the set. And it was just wild, just kind of watching right. Eruption. Yeah. Uh, but this song's called Beast, and it's so heavy. Um, and just it sounds like you're in a horror movie. Right. And that's, yeah. yeah, I mean, there it is. But let's listen to this. I don't even know what tuning that is. That was one of the first bands, besides like Meshuggah and some of these guys that are maybe playing eight strings. They've, that's got to be an eight string or the seven strings with the, the strings flapping right. so yes. low because yep. that's just so heavy. And there's something too about like from a, from a rhythmic, from like the drum standpoint, when it's just literally playing a simple one, two, it's like Phil Rudd's playing ACDC. Like it just, it makes it so heavy. There's right. another, there's another one uh, coming up where the, the drums are absolutely barely doing anything, but it's, it, it makes it feel open. Works. And just it just makes it so heavy, because usually it's like all the double bass and fast pace and all these different fills, right. but like when it hits that, it's just like about the riff. Yep. And that's, that one is there. Um, so this one's one that I recently found, and this song, I don't know a ton about this band, I think they're more of like that kind of post-hardcore, like mosh. Kubla Khan, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. They, this song is, uh, it's called Ant Pile. And there was a video that was shared with me, and I saw the singer. This was like a live clip. And for some reason, it was just incredible because the dude's just like eating a banana. 
while this was going on, and I was like, this guy's awesome. <laughs> Just he's party, um, but this song, there's something about this song that kind of reminds me of some showdown stuff. Yeah, it's got like a sleazy southern, like a little dirty, like where you kind of get that stank face, like right. a little. You just feel a little dirty after listening to it. Yeah. But um, this one's fun, man. guitar mic. That's nasty, man. Also, not to mention, saying SOB at the beginning of a breakdown oh, might man. be... I, Bootleg Con, I, I think, has the best use of swearing by anyone ever. Agree. That's that like, so well done. I've never heard that. I'm like... My gosh, yeah. it's just, yeah, that's a good one. That one's fun. It's got that Southern, it's got that, just the, the tempos perfect to like move your head. But then it's got those little like Southern, almost like dime bag-ish, like pitch harmonics and it's, it's nasty, man. I really like that. Band. So this next band, I don't know a ton about this band. I know that, um, I think it was in November, I went and saw ABR. These guys opened up for them. Um, this album is actually insanely good, and it's the production sounds incredible, but it's spite, it's dedication to flesh, and this song is absolutely crushing. And what's really funny is I've got three children, but I've got two little ones that are like three and two, and for some reason they they call this song Black Drums, and they're always requesting it, and they both headbang simultaneously to it, which is kind of awesome. But this this breakdown was one of the ones, too, that, this song's got a lot going on, and then this this thing this riff hits and it's just lights out. I think oh yeah, I, I had never heard this before you said it to me. This, so good. This, was, I think this like, album's good, man. One I hadn't heard this one was like, oh man. Yeah, it's like it's so heavy. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure they also screamed the name of the band during the breakdown. They say spite, and it's like props for that. It's like wearing your own T-shirt. That's kind of right. awesome. All right, let's listen to this one. Stop. love that yes yeah it takes a minute for those to export while i'm making them so i kind of do other stuff while we're loading and that that second part happened and i was stopped like whoa whoa yeah this, hello this, this hi yeah <laughs> hello hey there i don't know a ton about this next one this band i've no experience with them or anything like that i don't know a ton about them i think they've been a little controversial I don't ever listen to many songs this album i have listened to mainly like for lifting because right. it's so heavy but this song, for some reason, it's this is a Muir, um, Smokey. This song starts out so freaking heavy. I think it's just the combination of the, like the vocals and just right. the rhythm. It just sounds so heavy. And then it's got like the weird, like ambient, like they're, they're very unique. They are. They have an interesting style. Um, but this song, for some reason, I was like, this has to probably make the list, man, because this is absolutely crushing. Let's listen to this one. Hello.
And then it just keeps going. It's like, let's just keep that up. You can play the whole song. It's yeah, it the whole. Hard, it was harder to wear a stop. I know you. You you don't. You just let it go. Um, that that's just so heavy. I think I found that band because the the lead singer did guest vocals on a Sleeping Giant song. Oh, right on. Day, which I always thought was. Heavy. Dude, I met. Um, that's Holy Name. Yes. Yep. yep. And I'm, I'm, my mind has gone blank, but that's Tommy. Like Tommy Green. Dude, that guy is special. Seems like a really, I would, yeah. He's, he's a special dude, man. I, re, I met him at, um, I met him at an event that Jake actually had for, oh. we did a, we did some stuff for Your Life Gym, which oh, is right. yes. Jake's yes. gym, yes. which is that. a whole other topic. It's incredible what he's doing to help physical and mental health and really combine, you know, working with heart support, um, which is an incredible foundation and organization. But, I met him at that event, like the one year anniversary, and right. that guy was just, he was so interesting to talk to. Yes. Um, oh, and cool. that holy name, I've been actually, it's really, really, it's like metal praise music. Yep. It's really cool, man. Yep. I, yeah, I watched the, they put their whole live album on YouTube recently. And okay. It's so good. So I mean, good. It's like one of the best live shows yeah, I've ever watched. His vocals are really like, like, uh, not operatic. I don't know the word. Yeah, I, yeah. You say like they're right. just like they, they, he does a really good job. It's like I was recommending it to a friend, and I was like, "How do I? How, how do you explain I, that?" Yes. Yeah, you just have to kind of listen to it. Yep. But it's it's really well done. And then like Joe from Beloved and Advent comes yes. in and does some vocals. Yep. I think the uh, is it what is his name? Is it Brooke from Impending Doom? Yeah, Brooke Reeves. He's yep. got some sick vocals yeah, too. Yeah. I was hoping that they could get, not to plug, but David Button with the showdown. I would, I He's got really some absolutely that. bone crushing vocals. It'd be cool to get him on if they do something else. But all right, so there's there's three more. Um, these are not necessarily ranked. It's they're just these are like showing my age more. But this one is uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, Pantera. And there's something about you know they don't have like break, they're not a breakdown right. band, yeah. but this one. You take it out of context and just listen to it. It's incredible. But like where it fits in the song after that solo, it's just so good. And then the video is classic. Really? Dude, like there's some there's some really cool shots of the guitar. Right. And you can see down back and you can see him like slide. You can watch the strings move up the fretboard. It's really cool. I'll have to check that out. You should go check that. And it, I, I'm pretty sure it's around the same, like the same riff. And it's just, it's, it's awesome. So this is Five Minutes Alone, Pantera. Dude, that's a stomp, man. And not to mention that riff, like that's nasty. One of the that's one of my favorite songs probably ever. That part, just, that one always. Whenever like breakdowns like that, you know the best songs ever. Like, you know, it's like I don't know what song. Like when people say Pantera, like what song comes to mind? Right. Probably like Walk. Like one of their most popular, which is awesome, but like some of their like, like there's another one that it's probably one of the sleaziest riffs ever written. I think it's it's dragged the waters. Right. It's just the dirtiest southern riff, but it's so good. That was that one almost. I was like, uh, which, but that one that beat down is just brutal. Yeah, man. But yeah, they rest in peace, Dimebag and Vinnie Paul. That was 
what a nightmare situation, man. They were so good. All right, there's two more. This next one, have you heard of this one before? Did you hear Life Once Lost? You know, I, when I pulled it up, I, I definitely recognized their logo. Okay. But I'm not sure I've ever actually listened to them. This album's sick. I, I didn't get into their other albums quite as much, but right. this one, I don't. it might have been like 2007 or 8 when this one came out. I might be wrong. Um, but this album is absolutely incredible. Nice. The production was really good, especially like back at that time. Like there was like some production, like Adam D was producing a lot of really good sounding stuff at that right. time. And then there was some stuff coming out. Like this album, like production wise, like Jeremiah is amazing, but I wish we could go back and remaster that thing just to give it like some new sounds. Um, but this one was one that I remember when it came out, Josh Childers, the original guitar player for the showdown, him and I were like probably like the biggest metal heads of the group. Right. And this one was just nasty. And this this specific song, his vocals, it's when I when I see that I, never, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what the singer looks like or his name. Right. But how he says his words, I think of a pirate. Oh, like right, yeah. I don't know yeah. why that sounds weird, but if you listen to it, but you're like, that, I can see this right. guy being an angry pirate. Yeah. Um. Because he says like fire, rawr. like he just like growls weird. Right. But it's this song is. Incredible, and this album is awesome. So this is a life once lost vulture, and this riff is gonna crush you. Yeah, that is. And this guitar. Short and sweet. Actually, at the end of the song, it goes into this like beat down at the end that's a variation of that riff, and it's also crushing. Nice. So that, that whole album is, if you like that, that's the one. And also, speak just this is random, but shout out to Periphery. Periphery is probably like one of my all-time favorite bands, yeah. and they don't like, there's so many songs that, like their, their self-titled album will be my top 10 of all time, right. but they don't necessarily have like, breakdowns like their songs are so complex and they're they flow together so well like i couldn't find them but i I wanted to include them because i love that band so much they're so talented um okay the last one this is meshuga new millennium side night christ this this came out my freshman year in high school in 98 and this album this album and also that lamb of god new american gospel album came out around i think it was 2000 like in high school um, so between like, dude, I was like loving some new metal too, like straight up, right. yeah. like some old corn, dude, old Limp Biscuit. I was, I loved all that stuff. That, yeah. I was totally into it, but I also love like actual metal, more metal right. type stuff. But yeah. especially being a drummer, like you have to like Meshuggah, you have to like Seven Dust, like some of these rhythmic yeah. bands that have right. great drummers. But yeah. this, this, uh, uh, this is probably like one of my, this might be my favorite of all time just because of the build up and this, this song in general is a, basically a full beat down, but this ending is insane. Have you seen this video yet? You have to go check it out. They're air drumming in a tour bus. It's awesome. It just keeps going, which is totally fine. But it starts to fade. So good, man. That's yeah. It keeps going, and I, like live, they like transition it out. They don't just obviously fade it out. But that's there was another track. I think it's called Corridor of Chameleons. It's the next it's the third track on that album. It's also got one that's just stupid. That. I was really like, I don't know which one to pick, but overall I think that's that's probably like my favorite Meshuggah song ever. And it's also like um, if any drummers are like getting into double bass and like some polyrhythm stuff, 
it's it does it's not that hard to play, but there there's some components that are tricky with your feet, like right. to get your feet correct. And because he starts a lot of patterns off with like a left foot versus a right, which is always throws people off. Right. But it's a really good song to like get some interdependence while you're you know poly. He's just on a China basically the whole song. Right. But to try to get everything else down, it's just a awesome song. But no man, dude, that's all thirteen. So it was that was fun, man. So pretty awesome. It's gonna be like my favorite video I ever made. <laughs> oh, dude, no, thank, dude, thank you, man. This is this is so fun. It's it's cool because like nothing about like it's nothing about work related. It's just about like metal, yeah. and that's been up honestly since I was I'm 41 years old, man. I've I've listened to this stuff since I was probably 12. So it's been most of my life. This has kind of been um, I listen to other things as well, but this is like. Well, I listen to probably the most, honestly. So, no, this is great, man. Thank you. Yeah.